Would you like to hear him? Good. All right. Well, sailors, this is our last day before our closing ceremony aboard the VBS Mercy. It's been a great week. And there's one more verse. You already did this verse when you were practicing, but let's do it again. I want to show it to you. But I have to press the slide. The best of technology right here. We're gonna do that in a minute. Perfect, look at this. Psalm 23, six. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. It got cut off, but that's okay. Look at this, this is a promise. It's a wonderful promise. Goodness and mercy follow me all the days of my life. Well, we're here, and then after, we'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Yeah. Amen. We're going to talk about that here with Salty, wherever he is. Let's call, let's call Salty. Salty! Here I am. Wow. I'm so happy to see you, Salty. I'm happy to see you, too. I'm happy to see all of you. You sure have had a major attitude change since the other day. Yep, that day I had a bad attitude. Yeah. Today I have a gladitude. We, a gladitude, we, right? We should all have a gladitude. Why are you so happy? The wind has picked up and the ship is sailing right along. I think we'll make it into port on time after all. Will you be glad when we reach port? I sure will. I may live on this ship most of the time, but the port is really my home. When we are out sailing along, I get kind of homesick for my real home. Really? You do? Yes. I think of my father. It's been a long time since I've seen him. I miss him when I, I'm sailing on the ship, but when we get home, I get to see him. Is it okay with your father that you're on the ship? Oh, yes. My okay. father is the ship's owner. Oh. He wants me to sail on this ship because he has an important job for me to do. But when we reach the port, I'll be home and I can see my father at last. I know that will make you really happy. That reminds me of our Bible verse. It talks about our father's house, too. Let's all try to say it together as much as we've memorized. Ready? Psalm 23, 6. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Great job. Just like you are so happy to get home to see your father, someday we who are God's children will get to go to our heavenly home. We'll get to see our heavenly father. How wonderful it will be to spend eternity with God. Will everyone go to heaven and be with God? Is everyone God's child? Sadly, no. Only the people that have asked Jesus Christ to forgive their sin and come into their heart will get to go to heaven. But the wonderful thing is that anyone who wants to accept Jesus Christ can. Jesus Christ is willing to receive everyone that asks him to forgive them? Yes, he has so much more mercy. He is willing to forgive everyone who comes to him and asks. That's a great reason to have a gratitude. It is. You know, Salty, I was just taking a close look at you. You have such lovely feathers. I do? Yeah. Have you ever seen yourself in a mirror? I don't have a mirror. Oh, well, it just so happens I have a mirror right here. <laughs> oh my, pretty bird, pretty bird. <laughs> All right, it's, it's enough of that. Time to... See you later, Salty. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye, sailors. Bye, Salty. Bye, Salty. Great, 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 great. Yeah. All right. That's the last new picture. There you go. Remember who that was? Fish, the boat, the storm, and Jonah. So we have a brand new teacher and preacher tonight. Would you like to know who it is? We had Mr. Bob. We had Mr. Armando is still back here. We had, uh, actually, where is? Uh, 
Oh, there he is. Okay, good. Mr. Bob, Mr. Armando, let's see, who is next? Mr. K no, Mr. Darrell, and then Mr. Kingston. And tonight we have Mr. Paul. You know who Paul is? Come on, Paul. Paul is the son of the one lady who does all the food here, so make sure you treat him real nice, okay? He'll sit up straight, try to stay awake. Don't look backwards, look forwards, okay? Look up this way and try to listen carefully. He'll uh, help us out, okay? Is that all right there? Oh, yeah, that's fine. Okay, great. Uh, okay, yes. All right, hello, kids. How's it going? So, yep, I'm Paul. Yep, I'm Paul. Um, so, we've been learning about Jonah. Can anybody tell me what they learned so far? God uh, gave Jonah a job, and what was that job? All right. Yep, that's right. And uh, what did Jonah do? He went the wrong way. Yeah, he did go the wrong way. And he went the wrong way on purpose, too, which is disobedience. Um, so after uh, Jonah went the wrong way, what happened? Does anybody know? He got in trouble. Yeah, how did he get in trouble? The thunder? Yeah, there was a lot of thunder. There was a storm, and Jonah ended up getting thrown overboard because he was disobeying God, and God showed mercy on him and allowed a fish to pick him up, send him the right direction, right? Well, after that, what happened? After, Jonah, after God told Jonah to go to Nineveh again, what happened? Did Jonah obey the second time? Yeah, he did. This time he obeyed. And he, he preached at Nineveh. And what happened, uh, what happened after he told Nineveh that God was going to punish them and destroy them? What happened? Yep, all that stuff did happen. God ended up showing mercy on Nineveh because Nineveh asked God for forgiveness. Jonah didn't even preach them to repent, but they knew that they should repent, and they fasted, the king fasted, and God ended up having mercy on them, right? And Jonah, was he happy about the, God showing mercy and compassion towards them? No, he wasn't. He wasn't very happy about it. In fact, he said, I knew you were going to do this, God. I knew you were going to show mercy and compassion on them, and he didn't want that. But God did show compassion and mercy on them. And that's a good thing, right? Aren't we happy that God shows mercy and compassion on us? Because we're just as bad as the people in Nineveh. We're all sinners. We all deserve the punishment of God. And Jonah deserved punishment too. God showed compassion to Jonah and mercy, not just to Nineveh, but also to Jonah throughout the story. He showed compassion uh, towards Jonah by saving him, first of all. We know that Jonah was a prophet, which means he had to have been saved, right? Does everyone understand salvation? I believe you do. But in case you don't, I'm going to explain it. Salvation is uh, the fact that we're all sinners. We're all bad people, right? We all disobey God the same way we disobey our parents. And we all deserve punishment for disobedience, right? What happens when you uh, disobey mommy and daddy? Do you get in trouble? Yeah. yeah, you get in trouble, right? You might get some privileges taken away. You might get a spanking. It depends on what you did that was bad. Now, what happens if somebody uh, robs from someone, steals, takes something that doesn't belong to them? They go to jail, right? Yeah, so there's punishment. Yeah, that's right. Bad guys, they go to jail. And if you steal from the president, then you go for jail even longer. Now, when you steal from God, who's the creator of the entire universe, there's much more punishment for all of us because you are stealing from the creator of everything. If it's bad, the level of importance, that's what's important. So the level of importance of someone when you commit a crime against them, that is the level of the punishment that you're going to get. So all of us sin against God every single day. Even if you're a Christian and you're saved, you still sin against God. You're always in need of his mercy. Jonah, he was, uh, he was saved. He was a man of God. He was a prophet. But he still disobeyed God, right? He turned around, and he was going the wrong direction. He, he, he said, no, God, I don't want to preach in Nineveh. Tried to run away and hide. That's 
we all know, especially from this story, that we can't hide from God. God sees everything, and he sees inside your heart, too. He knows your motivation. He knows your sinful thoughts. When you have hate towards people, like Jonah did, he had hate towards Nineveh. Um, you know, God sees that, and he doesn't like it. God says that we should love our enemies, and we should love one another. So Jonah should have been proud and happy to be able to preach to Nineveh and then have them hear that they repent and God showed compassion and mercy on them. God showed uh, so much compassion to Jonah also after he disobeyed God already. Instead of letting, allowing Jonah to drown, God got the fish to come over and take him all the way back to Nineveh and said, okay, go preach to Nineveh. And Jonah said, okay, Lord. Then God showed compassion again with the vine. You know, you all remember that when it was boiling hot and the wind, well, this was before the wind, but it was boiling hot and God had this vine grow over and then the vine got destroyed and then Jonah was still complaining. So what we need to remember is, and what we can learn from the story, is that we should show compassion towards others just like God shows compassion. We don't want to be like Jonah and not show compassion. We want to love each other. You want to love... Think about, I'm sure that you guys know of some kids that might treat you bad sometimes, you know, and they make you mad and angry and you just want the worst for them. But if you think about it, we treat God way worse than anyone has ever treated us. We actually ended up, because of our sin and because of our uh, wickedness, because we're all bad people, God sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for us. And when he died on the cross, he took our sin so all the bad things that you've ever done in your life, if you believe that Jesus Christ did die for you, he took your sin, put it upon himself, and he lived a perfect life, by the way. Before he died, it was around close to like 35 years or something. I don't know his exact age. He lived a perfect life. He didn't sin one time, didn't disobey his parents. He, didn't, uh, he never lied. I'm sure we've all done that, right? We've all had hate, too. He hasn't hated anyone. He hates sin, though. But he took our sin upon himself, and he imputed, or he traded the perfectness, his perfect, uh, perfectness, and he gave it to the sinners, and he took the sin, and then he sacrificed himself and died. Do you uh, think that he's a loving God for doing that and compassionate? Yeah, because we're, uh, we don't deserve that, but he did it for us anyway. And you, if you're not a child of God right now, you could become a child of God tonight. You can become one right now um, before you even leave. You can become one. You could talk to the adults. They'll talk to you about how you could become saved. I'm going to touch on it a little bit, but some things are personal. And if you want to talk to someone, you can after the lesson. But I'm going to tell you how you could become saved, okay? So we're all bad people. We all deserve God's punishment. We all understand that. Well, if you don't understand that, you have to, because whether you know it or not, you are a bad person. And once you understand that, you have to repent from your sins. Repenting isn't just saying sorry to God for being a bad person, like when you go to mommy and daddy and say, or someone you were mean to and you say sorry. You're, if you're sorry, you're not going to keep doing it again, right? You have to say sorry to God and say, okay, God, I'm sorry for what I did. And then you go the right direction. Just like when Jonah disobeyed God and he went the wrong direction, he disobeyed, but then when he said sorry to God, he went the right direction. And that's what we need to do. We need to turn around and start heading on the right road and serving and honoring God and loving Jesus because of what he did for us. You know, he died for us. But guess what? He could live in your heart. And he rose again on uh, three days he was in the grave. And he rose again. And because of that, he defeated sin and he defeated death. And we can, um, we can all go to heaven because of that. And heaven is a wonderful place where you'll never cry again, you'll never sin again, and you'll be able to be in the arms of Jesus. You could give him a hug. You'll see him. But you'll see his scars there too. And there'll be a reminder of what he did for you and the price that was paid in order to have you go to heaven. He'll treat you like you're his son because you're, in his eyes, perfect if you believe in him. You have to believe that he died on the cross for you. You believe you're a bad person, but you also believe that Jesus was perfect and he paid the price on the cross. And because of that, you can be saved and have eternal life and spend it with him forever. And before that time, 
we can live showing compassion to other people. We can show love to your neighbors, your enemies. You know, a soft answer turns away wrath, the Bible says. Next time someone's mean to you, I challenge you to show love and compassion to them. Just like when we're mean to Jesus, but he shows love to us, it makes us love him even more. So um, I hope that, uh, that this uh, touched your all's hearts. I would pray, I'm praying for you guys, and you know, I love you guys. Your families love you guys. God said, Jesus said, let the little children come unto me, for such belong the kingdom of heaven. And I'm praying that you guys will be saved. And uh, if you're not, let's uh, just pray real quick. Everybody uh, fold their hands, I mean, fold their hands and bow their heads. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for all things. Thank you for all we've learned about Jonah and your love and compassion that you showed towards him and the compassion you showed towards Nineveh. Lord, I pray that we will understand that we are bad people and we don't deserve your love or compassion. Lord, we deserve punishment, and we deserve to go to hell, Lord. But because you were rich in mercy and sent your son, you died on the cross for us and paid the price for our sins. Lord, thank you for that. Lord, I pray that you will save each and every one of these children. I pray that you'll give them uh, insight on their sin and an understanding, Lord. And I pray that you will save their souls and that they'll go out and show compassion towards others and that other people that don't know you will see you living through them, Lord. Thank you for all you've done in your name. Amen. All right, that's it. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Paul. Well, not yet. Uh, we want to just finish up a little bit. Yeah, so he was talking about salvation and the idea of being bad. And, uh, you know, the thing to remember is that God is perfect. And not only that, but Jesus became a man and he was still perfect. He never sinned. He was all good. We're not. <laughs> We're just not, are we? We struggle. One, uh, one of you last night was talking to me and said that he knew he was saved. He said he admitted his sin and he trusted Jesus. But then he said, but the problem is that sometimes I make bad decisions. And sometimes I do the wrong things. And that's what Paul means by, by being bad. We do bad things. And so the question tonight, as he was saying, is, have you trusted Jesus as your Savior? We'll give you another opportunity tonight uh, to do that. If you have not, you must admit your sin. You have to admit that you have sinned, that you have failed the Lord. You're not perfect. No one is. But the problem is, are we willing to admit that we're, that we're so sinful that we don't deserve heaven? We can't earn heaven. See, down here, we can make mistakes we even go to jail, but we still don't go to hell. <laughs> and we can do all kinds of problems. You can get pulled over by a police officer and have to pay a fine, or you might get paddled at home, or maybe you get a bad grade in school because you didn't do your homework. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about when we die and stand before God as our judge. He is our judge. Jesus is our judge. And we'll all answer to him. The question is, are you going to be on the mercy side or the judgment side. He's merciful. He wants to have mercy on us. He wants to forgive. Jesus died because he loves us. The question is, how do you judge him? You say, you're right and I'm wrong. That's what repentance is. We change our minds. and We say, you're right. God's right. I'm wrong. We change our minds and we think what he thinks, and that's when we confess our sin. We confess our sin, our attitudes and actions to be exactly what he says when, they, when we fall short. So we admit our sin, and then we trust Jesus, and we say, oh, that's why he died. But he didn't stay dead, did he? No, he rose from the grave. And when he rose from the grave, that was proof that the sin debt was fully paid. So we're going to bow our heads in a moment. When we bow our heads... I'm going to ask you again if you would like to admit that you've sinned and trust Jesus as your Savior and be saved. And if you'd like to, then I'm going to ask you to stand up.
that have raised your hands tonight. So it's a little bit different. Same questions, but we'll ask you to stand up, and then we'll talk to you. And when I talk to you, I'm just going to say, why did you stand up? Okay? Does anybody have a question? Okay, good. Let's bow our heads. Bow our heads and close our eyes. And uh, our purpose now is just to give you, please close your eyes and put your hand down. Thank you. And uh, j just that you have privacy. That's why we ask you to close your eyes. And, um, you know, we don't need somebody looking around and wondering who's raising their hand or whatever. Sometimes we get so curious, we just want to know. So if you don't mind, please, to just be polite to everybody. And bow your, uh, close your eyes, okay? Father, help the children tonight. None of us can open another person's eyes. You can. None of us can help us to understand eternity. You can. None of us can show us how good you are and how not good we are. But you can. So I pray for each of the boys and girls. They've learned lots of Bible verses, sung really good songs that have good truth in them. They've heard your word. I pray that you would minister to them. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. If you'd say, I want to admit that I'm a sinner and put my faith in Jesus Christ as Savior, please stand right where you are. Okay, thank you. Good, and you were seated. Are you standing because of that question? Okay, you can go ahead and be seated then. Anyone else? Do you mind, do you mind chatting there with the, the one? And I'll get the other one. going to have some prayer. Good, isn't it? She'll be right back. She's not going to heaven right now, we don't think. Mm -hmm. All right, let's pray. Father, thank you for these two. We just ask for your good blessing. Use the word in our lives. Be glorified. Bring honor. Help us to bring honor to the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, now what we're going to do is work through some songs and memory verses, and uh, we'll do that on the platform, so we'll get Jennifer to come and Allison to come, and I hope before you leave tonight or tomorrow that you make sure you thank the people that did all this. Do you like how Allison plays the piano? How many of you play the piano? Let me see your hand. Yeah. Wouldn't you like to play the piano? What? Do you? Grant? Lillian, does Grant play the piano? Once upon oh, I was going to say, man, well, I want to hear it if you do. But anyway, yeah, you know how you get to play the piano better? You just keep on practicing. You got to pay attention to your mistakes. That's the only way to get better at anything. It's not being negative. It's just being being uh, truthful. Yeah. Pay attention to mistakes. Keep on working on the things you can't do, and get a little better. And someday you can play like Allison or better. Okay, Jennifer, Miss Jennifer, come ahead. And uh, all right, let's get. Uh,
You okay with that? Yeah. yeah. Yes, if not, you can stay around here. Would you like to have extra time to think? No. Okay, good. Well, let's